So a couple of mornings ago, I was praying and the Holy Spirit reminded me of how in primary school, you know, during common entrance, I was the highest in um, common entrance. I, I got 40, um, I got 482. And then the person after me got 472, yes. And while I was trying to ask the Holy Spirit why I was reminding me of this thought, it dawned on me that, you know, he was trying to say to me that even when I didn't know myself, he has been there doing things for me you know, leading me, guiding me, helping me make the right decisions, you know, helping me to pass my exams. I mean, I was only about nine years old. What did I know? Even if I read, what did I read? What did I know? You know, but God has always been there. And, you know, we can put so much emphasis on our efforts, you know, uh, we put so much confidence on what we know, how we did it, how we got the results. But the truth is, even the things that you knew to do, how did you know that even it wasn't by the Spirit of God? You know, as adults, we, we get so confident in what we can do, how we got here, these steps, that step, this, you know. And for a second, God just wanted to remind me that even in those times when I didn't know myself, he had always, he has always been there. So nothing has changed. But the problem is, as adults, we tend to forget because we are grown or because we are growing and we feel like we can start to do certain things for ourselves. It doesn't mean that the one who has been there right from time even when we didn't know ourselves even when when we didn't even know what love meant even when we didn't even know how to hold a pencil he has always been there writing things doing things for us giving us the right ideas giving us wisdom so with that thought in mind i'd like to talk about living the soft life how to live the soft life how to live the baby girl or the baby boy life today okay so um what do i mean by living the soft life Living the soft life has to do with a life, living a life that is totally dependent on God, a life that is humble, a life that, you know, um, focuses on God's abilities, okay, and just living an easy and worry-free life. So let's get right into it. Now, I'm going to be listening to you 10 ways that you can live the soft life. These are things that have been helping me and things that I'm still learning on my journey, you know, but trust me, I live the soft life. I mean, every day I'm discovering more and more. How easy it is to just depend solely on God and just be humble, you know, and let God, you know, let God do his thing in my life. So how to live a soft life. So I'll be itemizing. Number one, understand that God is supreme. God is the highest. God is the greatest. God has the final authority. And the earlier that we submit to this authority, the better for us. God is the greatest. Now in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verse 11, the Bible says, Yours, O Lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours yours O lord is the kingdom you are exalted as head over all i mean how wonderful is that god is the highest like his supremacy supremacy has to do with a life that you know um trumps every authority the number one the highest the greatest now imagine the one who is the greatest, the highest, who has the final authority, who is the beginning and the end, who has no end, who is indescribable, being on your side, loving you, choosing you, being, you know, the ultimate in your life. That's such a soft life. And the interesting thing is God sees us like he loves everyone individually. He chose us. He is, his love for us is immeasurable, infinite. Now, submitting to such authority, just having this mindset and, and this understanding that the one who loves you the most, the one who is more powerful, loves you the most, the one who, who, you know, who has all the authority, the one who is supreme, loves you so much. He chose you. He's the one that will leave the 99 for the one. And you are that one. You are precious. You are special in his sight. I remember one song we used to sing, one nursery rhyme. Um, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. God loves everybody individually. He loves us individually and he is on your side. So submitting to this authority, just having that consciousness that the one who loves, who is the highest, who is the greatest, who loves you the most, who is the most loving is on your side. That's a soft life on its own. Okay. Number two, number two way to live the soft life is Understand that God is in eternity and we are in time. Now, what do I mean? I'd like to use the analogy of a football match. So anytime I'm praying for singles, hangers or anything, I always say that, you know, 
God has God is watching a replayed match and we are living out, you know, a live match. So if somebody is watching a replayed match, it means that they have already seen it. Now, but in this case, it's not that they have even seen it, they planned it out. So what I do is I just say, God, align me with your plan. You have done this already. Align me with your finished work for this project. I want to walk in your step. Lead me. Let me follow you. You have done this thing already. From where you are, it has already happened. Who have you chosen for this thing? Who have you put in place? Who would you like me to work with? Who? How do you want me to go about it? Because you have done it already. And in Psalms chapter 17, verse 5, the Bible says, My steps have held closely to your path. The tracks of the one who has gone on before. My feet have not slipped. This is so powerful. Now in Psalms 23 verse 5, it says, He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In Psalms 46 verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength, mighty and impenetrable to temptation, a very present and well-proved help in trouble. Now in Isaiah 45 verse 2 to 3, it says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. See, uh, you live this soft life when you align with God. When you walk in his step, experience life in his footprint. Let him lead you. That's how to live a soft life. Just understand that he is in eternity and you are in time. So everything, Bible says a thousand years is like a day in his sight. And that's it. Like he is way ahead of us. His thoughts are way higher. His plans are way greater. So live, walk in his steps. Walk in, let his tracks lead you. It's a very, very soft life. Just knowing that where you are, someone else has already passed it. And not just someone else, God Almighty who sees the end from the beginning, the best leader, the best teacher, okay? Number three, have a posture of obedience. Now, this is so important. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 28 to 30, the Bible says, But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and, and, like, and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Jesus asked them, which of them did the will of the Father? Now, there is no sacrifice in God's sight that is more than obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So no matter what you're doing in service to God and humanity, it's important that you find out what you know, God will have you do what his plans, his intent for your life is and walk in line with it. Align yourself with God's plan, God's plan for your life. Okay. To God, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than service. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're in alignment with what God will have you do. That's what obedience is to him. Now, in let's look at Martha in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. The Bible says, now it came to pass. As they went, that he entered into a city, a certain village, sorry, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with, serve, with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me and jesus answered and said unto her martha martha thou art careful and troubled about many things but one thing is needful and mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her now this is interesting she did one thing right though she received christ into her house so she received christ into her life let's say it that way but the thing was she still wanted to focus on the things that she thought were important or were necessary. Now, the thing is, we can look good in our eyes, but look wrong in God's eyes. Okay, and then reading this, I, I saw something I've never seen before. You see, she was struggling because she was not in the will of God. Sometimes we are struggling because we are not in the will of God. Imagine, help and assistance comes, come 
when we're in the will of God. So we're struggling because we're outside the parameters of God's provision. God is committed to his own plans. If you do not focus on what he has called you to do, it might be a struggle. Okay, look at what happened. Even after she had cried out to Jesus saying, are you not bothered that my sister is sitting down and she's not helping me? He didn't say, oh yeah, Mary, go and help your sister. He said, you are not in the will of God. You are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Your sister is doing the right thing. So if we look at it, I want us to think about this thing that I'm saying very well. Just maybe the reason that you're not seeing the help that you feel that you need or you're not seeing things the way they're supposed to be coming is just might be that you're not doing the will of God. So what am I trying to say to you? I'm challenging you to sit down and ask God, what would be, you know, what would you have me do with my life? What would be working in obedience for my life mean to you? Okay. Now, um, and then listen to God, whatever he has to say to you. Please pay attention and just make the necessary adjust adjustments. That's where the soft life is. I mean, look at Mary. She was just seated and just chilling. Soft life, just listening to God. And God was pleased. But Martha was all over the place trying to serve Jesus. You know, but he wasn't pleased. Okay. So, number four, put your hope in, um, don't put your hope in man. They will fail you. But God will never fail or disappoint. So put your hope in God. And one of the most, in fact, the most stressful life, actually, is to put your hope in man, is to depend on man. It is so stressful. And it's so important that we know that God is our source. See God as your source. And God is the God that would appoint people, okay, that he wants to use as channels. Would appoint people in for certain seasons, for certain things, for certain periods. Now, it's also important that we know when that season is over, okay, so that we don't keep trying to hold on to something that God is trying to take away from us. Now, the thing is, if we're not sensitive to know that some things with God are temporary, some provisions it makes, you know, through certain people are temporary, what happens is we start to idolize those things, okay? When we need certain things, we don't think about God anymore. We think of these people that can provide these things for us. We think of these people that, you know, can do these things for us just because God provided them at a certain time. Okay, and then back to what I was saying, you know, be sensitive to know, be discerning enough to know when a particular season with a particular helper or person or relationship is over, you know, so that you don't try to save a sinking ship that God is sinking himself or start to internalize things and feel that you are the problem. Now, why am I saying this? In um, Jonah chapter 1, verse 12, verse 15, <coughs> chapter 1, verse 12 to 15, sorry, the Bible says, and he said unto them, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. So shall the sea be come unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land. But they could not, for the sea wrath and was tempestuously ag tempestuous against them. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let, not, let us not perish for this man's life. And lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hath done as it pleased thee. So take up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea um, seized. Um, so they took, so, sorry, so they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. You see, you know, whatever they were going through was because Jonah was supposed to go somewhere. God sent Jonah on an, on an errand, but Jonah was trying to run, and then he joined their ship. Now, even after they had been experiencing the um, um, turmoil or whatever they were going through, Jonah said, it is my fault. Please, let me go. You know, let me come out of this whole thing. But they still wanted to keep the boat or the ship going just to, you know, get it to land. But God was saying, I'm done with this thing. Even when they knew that, you know, they had the wrong person on their ship, they were still saying, God, please don't allow this innocent blood. So these things happen when we don't, when we're not sensitive to the fact that God brings people temporarily for certain, you know, seasons. He tried so hard to save certain people, save certain relationships that God has said, I brought them for this, you know, particular season. Let them go. Focus on me, you know. And then the worst thing that happens is that we then get broken thinking that we are the reason why, you know, these things don't work or this person, this relationship did not work. Meanwhile, God's hand is in it, okay? Now, um, so, yeah, man does not have the ability to meet up with your desires or your, um, your expectations. Only God can. 
So it's so important that you focus your attention, your gaze on God, the one who can meet all your expectations, the one who can, you know, meet all your needs. It is too much pressure to put on any human being. And living the soft life means that you focus on your maker, the one who has the capacity to hold on to you, all your expectations. Now, number five way to live the soft life is living the soft life requires that we trust God completely over our lives and whatever situations we are faced with, knowing that God is in control. Now, in Psalms 23, verse 4, the Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, you know, um, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, this is so important. Our greatest assurance is knowing that God is with us, for us and in us. And nothing can ever go wrong. Even in our mistakes, he's there with us. Even in our flaws, he's there with us. He loved us before we first loved him. He loved us before we even knew ourselves. And he wants the best for us. So trust him in everything. Trust God. In Psalms um, 23 verse 1 to 3, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. For his name's sake. Now it's about him. It's not even about us. It's in his nature to love us, to take care of us. So it's not even about us or anything that we can do. We cannot earn his love. We cannot earn his mercy. We cannot earn his grace. Okay. It's not about us. It's in his nature. So even before we knew ourselves, like the story I shared in the beginning, even before I knew what it meant to write exams, he has been writing exams for us, telling us the right things to say, putting us, you know, giving, even showing us where to read. You know, so it's not about us. For his namesake, it's about him. It's about his nature. Okay? And I just want to say this. They say this. If you're a parent who's um, experiencing a challenge with your child, maybe you have a child with special needs, maybe um, developmental issues. When I was preparing for this um, video, just because I should tell you something, start speaking into the child's ears. God is in that child. Start to speak into that child's ears and start to remind the child, remind God that he's in that child. And the child must align with God's will for their life. Start saying it. Say maybe the child's name is um, Bemisola. Bemisola, you have God in you. And you must align. Your senses must align with, you know, with God's plan for your life. You will speak well. You will talk well. You would um, hear clearly. You will start to develop rightly. Because you have the one, the God, the I am on the inside of you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside your mother body and it's quickening your body it's quickening your mother body you start to develop as christ will have you develop start speaking those words right into the child's ears and before you know it the child will start to align because god is in that child okay um number six way to live the soft life is don't entertain negative thoughts or anxiety now god and fear ha have nothing in common these are two opposite things now in um first john chapter 4 verse 18 the bible says there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear okay because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love okay being god conscious eliminates fear anxiety worry okay god opened my eyes to see that anxiety is as a result of pride and let me share a personal example with you i remember one time i had a dream about him about my younger brother and I was so worried, you know, I could not pray. I was so worried. I was trying to reach him. His number wasn't going through. I was trying to call him, you know, and I was so worried. And when I was seated in my parlor and just thinking about how it was difficult to reach him and then my, and my dream and all of these things, those people said to me, this is pride. Like, even if you reach him now and you tell him the dream, would it make sense to him if I don't reach out to him first? Why don't you pray and let me fix it? Ah! It dawned on me that I was walking in pride, that there was no way, even if I even reached him, if eventually I reached him, I couldn't even fix anything. So I went back to my room and I just stayed in the room and just prayed and prayed till I slept off. When I slept off, I had a dream that reversed the other dream. Eventually, my brother called me by himself and reached out to me, you know, oh, I told him, I was like, oh, thank you for praying that. Look at what happened. You know, it makes sense that God has done this and done that. I'm like, wow. Thank God. So imagine if I just stayed worrying overnight, you know, and then I didn't counter what I saw in my dream. I was more interested in reaching um, him to, you know, caution him or something or, you know, tell him what to do and everything. It wouldn't have made sense to him. And the thing that God wanted to avert spiritually wouldn't have been averted because I felt like I could handle it physically. Okay, so 
what am i saying to you you know don't entertain thoughts of anxiety pray instead praying will help to release anxiety even when those thoughts come cast them down i cast down reasonings and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of god and i bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of god's word god's word is supreme god is supreme so don't entertain those anxiety those anxious thoughts just speak god's word over them number seven practice generosity it's a sign of trust freely you have received freely give now freely giving people stuff you know being generous is a sign that we trust in god that he that has provided these things will definitely replenish us you know it's the trick of the devil to want to believe that oh it's our hard work that has brought us the blessing or it's our effort that has done things for us no 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 it is god you didn't do anything to be born into the family you're born into you didn't do anything to have the kind of wisdom and smartness that you have it is god there's something i even do with my son now he says oh mommy i'm smart and i say to him because you have god i always counter it by making him remember that he's not smart by himself it is god that is making him smart so every time he says oh mommy i got it i'm smart i'll say yes because you have god you know so freely you have received freely give if you have an idea that will help someone else to excel tell them if you have succeeded in something and you see somebody struggling you know help them out share your experience share your knowledge you know if you have money to give give money freely you have received freely give now let's look at um luke chapter 12 verse 16 to 21 bible says um and he spake a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this will i do i will pull down my bands and burn great and build greater and there will i bestow all my fruits and my goods and i will say to my soul so thou hast much goods laid up for many years take thine ease eat drink and be merry but god said unto him thou fool this night thy soul shall be required of thee then whose shall these things be which thou hast provided so he so he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards god so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards god see generosity is a sign of you know trust in god generosity equals a soft life see yeah? when somebody comes to you and says oh this thing that you have done i really like it see i'm struggling with this thing put them through don't be afraid that oh maybe when you put them through they will pass you i heard someone say this thing recently and it was so ridiculous oh i don't want to help you because if i help you now you'll be ahead of me that's not a godly mindset you know we should freely give freely give of what we have freely be generous with your time your ideas your resources okay practicing generosity is a sign that we trust god and trusting god is living the soft life okay now number eight don't internalize man's rejection or disapproval now this is so important for your mental health don't allow yourself to be bothered by man's rejection or disapproval of you and let me tell you the one who is the greatest who is the highest who is the most loving most beautiful is on your side he approves of you he totally approves of you he faced rejection to gain you he's the one that will leave the 99 just for that one he considers you a special you are special to him so don't ever allow yourself to be bothered by how people treat you so let me tell you people's um disapproval of you or rejection of you is a sign of an internal problem that they have it is it's a reflection of their flaws you know yesterday i um i was on third Milan bridge and there was too many films too many films in my eyes too many films in my eyes and you know it's uh, making my eyes to um water a bit and i was like ah, what's happening and the Holy Spirit said to me, this is exactly what it is. When an exhaust is faulty, it releases toxic fumes into the air. Now, it doesn't mean that the air is faulty. It is a result of a bad exhaust that is polluting the air. Now, what am I saying to you? When people project certain bad behaviors towards you, when they treat you in certain ways, reject you, betray you, you know, disapprove of you, it's a reflection of their flaws. Now, let me tell you, the most you can do for them is, pray for them and give them space mentally and physically if you can because um, people have a lot of things that they're going through and you can't even you know um, what's the word i'm looking for 
you can't fix everybody you can't fix everything so pray for them and give them space and keep going because if you stay there now let me tell you something a lot of the times people that are very critical of, of, of that a lot of the times people that are very critical of other people are people who have very low self-esteem okay and if you let them get to your head what they want to stop you from doing is the thing that you're doing okay the thing that you know they feel threatened by so you don't want to allow them to get to your head you want to make sure that you focus on the thing that your hand finds to do focus on it and god will reward you and crown your effort with success but what can you do for them just pray for them and give them the space mentally and if physically you can give them space as well all well and good so living the self life has to do with not internalizing you know um don't internalize rejections or disapproval of man knowing that god has already accepted you you are his beloved child okay and then number nine no even i i let me even read this scripture in romans chapter 8 verse 38 to 39 bible says for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor anything present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ our lord okay so no matter what god already loves you nothing can separate you from that love so put you know people's issues in in their place and hold on to god's love that he has for you okay then number nine don't be a people pleaser live a structured life that res reserves your energy and time for the things that matter to god to you and purpose fulfillment oh my god it is so exhausting trying to please people okay economics has taught me that the wants of man are insatiable so what you want to do is focus on yourself have a structured life me i don't do rapid response to anything i take my time i don't owe anybody rapid response if you send me a message when i'm free i check it i respond to you in the mornings, I have my routines. By the time I'm done with my routine, which includes reading my Bible and spending quality time with my God, if I open my WhatsApp or Instagram or attend to any matter, but I must first, you know, fulfill those routines. I must go through those daily structures so that I reserve my energy and pay attention to the things that are my priority, that are God's priority. Pleasing God is the soft life. You know, you cannot please everybody. You can't stretch your energy everywhere. One thing you must know is a lot of people are users and if you put yourself in a place where you can be used they will drain your energy then guess what but when it's time for you to focus on the things that god will have you do like reading your bible and praying and you know meditating on god's word you're tired you're sleepy because you have exhausted yourself trying to meet up with people's expectations people who are you know um, who have an entitlement mentality you know and you're trying to meet up their expectations and you cannot meet up to everybody's expectations but there's one person you can please Faithfully. and he says if your ways is god even your enemies will be at peace with you so you want to focus on pleasing god you want to focus your energy on that you know people should be okay with your no your later or i'll get back to you on, on thursday night i turn off my phone till friday night to pray to have personal reflection no matter what's happening on a friday no matter how much you want to give me no matter who is calling for my attention you are not god so you rest I will focus on because god loves us so much he's always with us now imagine you give your energy to everything else and then you deprive god of your attention and that's all that he wants from us he wants that reciprocity he wants our time he wants us he wants to be able to show us easy way soft life you know so you want to focus on those things and let god have your time okay focus build structures build structures and when you have structures it makes you plan better okay i'll give this time to my family i'll give this time to work i'll give this time to god i'll reciprocate this energy that i'm getting from this person things like that that way you live a soft life okay and then lastly this is very very important number 10 live a life of gratitude and not an entitled one live a grateful life and not an entitled one so living a grateful life is a soft life now there's so much to be thankful for you wake up in the morning lord i thank you that i woke up thank god that you can eat that you can breathe that you that you can walk that you can move your hands the people that cannot move their hands thank god for everything that you can see that you can hear that you can perceive 
be thankful. Now, in um, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 6, the Bible says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Thank God. Thank God that Jesus died for you. Thank God that you are saved. Thank God that you are going to make heaven. Just thank God for everything. Be thankful. Praise God. You know, be very, very thankful. An ungrateful life is a depressed life. You want to be you want to live that soft life. And to live that soft life, you have to be thankful. Look for any and everything to thank God for. Be grateful. Now in Psalms 150, verse 1 to 6, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the excellence of his greatness. Okay, then I'll jump to number six. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now, this is so important. Be thankful. Just thank God. Even when you feel like you don't have any reason to. I practice this even for the tiniest detail. I think about somebody and they come and I'm like, ah, oh, thank you, Lord. You know, oh, I'm trying to charge my phone. There's no light. And then Nepal just brings like, ah, oh, thank you, Lord. You did this. It's not Nepal. It's you. You know, so I, I thank God for everything. I, I look for every opportunity. So thank God, I live a life of gratitude. And this is how to live a soft life. I hope this has blessed you. I trust this has blessed you because I've been blessed myself. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to reply, leave a comment with me or leave me a comment. I'll be in my comment section. Just tell me, what is God saying to you? I want to know through this video, what is God saying to you? And I'll be in my comment section. And please do well to subscribe and share this video so that you can bless someone, teach someone how to live a soft life. I'll see you next week. Bye.